everyone it's Kathy and welcome back here to my YouTube channel Kathy's Random Acts of Stampin and back here in my craft room it's always good to have you here with me I hope that you will learn a little something today or be inspired to create something beautiful I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and I live here in the beautiful state of North Carolina but if you're not currently working with a demonstrator and you're interested in ordering any of the products that you see me use today I would absolutely love the opportunity to earn your business I do offer rewards for uh, purchases that you make. If you use my host code, you will receive a card kit to make three beautiful cards. Everything that you need will be in the um, uh, packet that I'll send you, except the stamps. I cannot send stamped image, but I can send you everything else, and then you can use whatever stamps you have. Or if you really want the stamps that I sell, you can order those from me. So that is a little thank you from me to you to let you know that I do appreciate you choosing me uh, as your demonstrator and giving me the opportunity to serve you through my Stamping Up business. With all that being said, I want to showcase today everyday details. You know, when you look at the stamp, there's nothing here that indicates the dies. So I like to call this a standalone die set because you don't need it for the stamp set, and you don't need the stamp set for the dies, but they do make a beautiful presentation together if you so desire to, to use them, but you could use these with any other stamp set that you have. Now, not only do you get the ones that are showing here, there are two sets, so you get the rectangles, and you also get the circles. And then you have this little piece here, and you have this piece here. Actually, you have two of these. So I'm going to put those on the same card and this on that one. Um, th these are just a great set of dies to have, even if you don't like the stamps. But, I mean, who wouldn't love these? They're, they're beautiful. Um, but if you bundle and order these together as a bundle, you do save 10%. And that's true with any of our bundles. If you order the... Usually a bundle includes a stamp set and dies or the stamp and the punch. So depending on how they're um, hooked together. But um, let me, I'm going to grab my little lapel mic. I meant to put this one when I started because I think I have a little bit better. Um, let me stand up and turn this on. Okay, and we got that going, so hopefully we'll have a little bit better sound with using that mic over top of the other one. I think this one has a better noise cancellation on it. But anyway, um, what I was saying is this is just really a cute stamp set. And I'm going to show you, I kind of looked at what was in here in the catalog, um, this one here, and I kind of mimicked that, but I didn't like the way this looked. I don't know. I did measure, and it looks like I got it straight, but it looks crooked, and I think it has to do with the lines in the paper. So I'm going to redo this today, and we're going to make it a little bit different using a different uh, DSP here than what I use. So um, without any further ado, let me go ahead and move our catalog, and we are going to pull over. Now, I did choose to go back with the Bonnie Blue for my card base. Move everything over here just for a minute. And I'm going to get my trimmer. No, I need a scoreboard, not a trimmer. Um, so let's get the scoreboard out first. And I'm going to go ahead and score my card. This is our Stamping Up um, uh, trimmer. It's actually called the Simply Scored um, Scoring Tool, a.k.a. a scoreboard. Uh, I love this one because it's in one-eighth inches. So if you have trouble with eighths, that's an eighth, quarter, three, um, three-eighths, a half, um, five-eighths, three-quarters, and seven-eighths. So if you have trouble with your eighths, this scoreboard makes it really easy. But... Um, I'm going to go ahead and score this at four and a quarter, standard A2 size card. So give it a good score. I'm turning it over, and I'm going to fold it back onto itself and give well, something fell. I'm not sure what that was, but I heard something fall. Anyway, I'm going to give that a crease. I'm going to grab my bone folder because I really want to crease that down good. And I'm going to move the scoreboard because I want to make sure that I am 
using my glass mat and getting a good score on that. All right, that's going to be our card base. So we need to put a few other colors on it. Uh, I chose, instead, here I used the Moody Mauve, and here I chose the Flirty Flamingo. I wanted to brighten it up just a little bit. So the Flirty Flamingo, and then this is a piece of the uh, Designer Series paper. I think this was the, stip the stippled rose. And instead of using this side, I chose this water brush. It looks like um, brush strokes. And I chose that, and that's what I'm going to die cut. So I'm going to, this piece measures three and three-fourths by five. And I also have a piece of white that I cut just slightly smaller than the three and three-quarters by five. And I'll show you why I did that as soon as we do our die cutting. So I'm going to I'm going to move this out of my way. I'm going to bring up my stamp and cut and emboss machine. But before I do that, let's go ahead and get this die onto our paper. And I am going to use one of the rectangle dies and I'm going to use this largest one. And what we're going to do is we're going to center that as best we can, right in the middle of this piece of paper. So once I feel like I've got that about where I want it, I'm gonna hold it up like that. I'm gonna use my little um, post-it flags. So I love those for my dies. And I'm gonna just adhere it. The reason I love these things so much, and if you're interested in these, I have a link for them in on my, um, Craft Room Favorites on my Amazon store. So they're they're great to have. They they don't tear your paper. They come up easy. You can reuse them quite a few times. They kind of do it all. So now that I got that down, we'll bring our die cut machine up. And this is my big boy because we're going to need the larger one for this die. And I am going to put my number one plate, my number two uh, thin die adapter plate, I'm going to use my two cut plates, one that's dedicated for cutting. It's the one that's all scratched up. And, and then I have my cover plate that's not quite so um, ratty looking, I guess would be a good word. <laughs> so I'm going to lay that plate over top of that, and I'm just going to go ahead and crank that through. And by putting it in there at an angle, it takes a little bit of the stress off of your machine and your dies, and you don't get that loud popping. Plus, it helps keep your plates from warping. If you look at my plates, they're quite worn, but I don't have any warpage. Let me, let me get the little dots off of this one, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Where it cut those little dots out. See, I got little dots all over it. So I'm just going to rake these in my trash so I don't have them all over everything else. And now, when I bring my plates up and show you, there are my cut plates. And see how they're still as flat, almost as flat as if they were brand new. As soon as I see a little curvature, um, I will flip it over because you want that side down to the uh, base to be as flat as possible. But that's how I keep my plates from warping. It works really well for me. The top plate I flip every time, the bottom plate only when it bows. So that's that's kind of my rule of thumb. Um, so now I'm gonna go ahead and take this off. And we are gonna have a, a center that's cut out of that that you're going to save that for another card because look how precious that is. And that would be perfect to put on a card for a sentiment or whatever. So I'm going to hang on to that because that's a useful piece. Now we can bring this back over. And the piece of white that I had cut, that is going to get glued to the back of this. Or we can use some dimensionals around it and pop it up to make it look more like a frame. But before we go any further, we're going to need to... Um, do some stamping. So we're going to pull out our Memento Tuxedo Black Ink. And I'm going to grab that pot of flowers right there, the little vase. I think that's so cute. We're going to grab that. And we are going to sit 
this down right in the middle. And what I like to do to kind of get my placement for where I want it, I like to put this piece over it and make sure I'm setting it exactly where I want it to stamp. I am going to grab my stamp positioning tool. Let's see which one I can grab. What is the most convenient one to get? I rearranged, so once I rearranged some of the stuff in my craft room, nothing's easy to get to anymore. And I think you all know what I'm talking about. It's so easy to rearrange and then things, nothing fits what it's supposed to. And yeah, I, that's what I'm going through. But I'm going to grab out my little Misty. And I'm going to take my silicone sheet off of this because I, I really don't think I need that. Oh, let's see if we can get those magnets off. Pull this up. Well, they come right off once you do that. So I use that when I use photopolymer stamps, but this is a clean stamp, so I don't need anything on this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that all together, put it right down here in that bottom corner of my stamp positioner. Let me push that up so you can see what I'm doing. And then I'm going to lay a magnet here and here just to kind of hold that in place for me. And then I'm going to set my pot of flowers right in the middle, right where I want those to stamp. And once I get them where I want them, then I can go ahead and pick that up. And we can ink it up using the Memento. Now, the reason I'm using the Memento is I'm going to do alcohol blend markers, color this these flowers. So, so that my image doesn't bleed, uh, I'm using the Memento because the alcohol will move the pigment ink, but it will not move a dye ink. And this is a dye ink. So I'm going to go ahead and give this a really good press. Like that. And a lot of times, you know, um, you only need to stamp it once, but I can see it definitely needs to stamp again because it looks very light in places that I really wanted it to be dark. So I'm going to go back over it again. The beauty of having a stamp positioner. I do have the mini Misty as well as the large one uh, listed in my craft room favorites. So if you are interested in picking up one, you can go to my Amazon store and they do have them there. And I'm hoping the glue press is going to be uh, out there before too much longer. So it makes it nice when those tools are there and I can actually put them in my store and then be able to offer them to you. And by clicking on my link and going and shopping from that, I get a little bit of a kickback and I do appreciate that. Every little bit helps and it helps me to be able to continue to bring y'all uh, wonderful content on my videos. All right, I'm going to move that over and I think that is perfect. So I'm going to move that off now so I can ha just have my image. And I am going to take a little piece of scrap paper. And I'm just going to lay that in, and that that can get cleaned in a few minutes. I'll set that there in case we need it for anything else. So what I want to do is I want to grab some markers, and I want to use my boho blue. I'm going to grab a flirty flamingo. Let's get a daffodil delight. I'm looking at my Daffodil Delights, and this looks like Lemon Lolly, but it definitely says Daffodil Delight. So if you ever get your markers and your, your colors look, the, in, the tips are different color, it has to do with the dye lot that they're doing on the, um, I guess whenever they are making those particular ones. And we need a green. And I think for my green, I am going to grab an old olive. I think I'm going to grab an old olive dark and a light green apple green. 
that gives me two depths of color for my greenery. So these are going to be the colors of markers that I plan on using. So I'm going to start out with my light boho blue. And I want to color my base. And I'm going to use the, um, the brush tip. Now when you're using the brush tips, be very gentle because they are delicate. And you can wear them out. So it's just a very light touch. And I'm going to go around my vase. And you want to be careful not to get the alcohol outside your line if you can help it. If you do, there is a there is a fix to that. But I'm going to go right almost to the line, but not quite. And then I'm just going to swoop my color back and forth. And the beauty of the alcohol markers is that they blend so well. Look how pretty that looks. It already looks like it's highlighted, even though I didn't do any highlighting yet. So I think that's just wonderful. So I'm going to take the dark one now, and I'm going to use the bullet tip. And I want to go around the top of my face with a little dark. And I'm going to go like this, just to get a little dark right on, on the sides. Across the bottom and again across that top again. The more layers of color that you put down, the darker your colors will get. And then I'm going to come back with that brush tip and I am going to just drag that color into the other on both sides just to give me, and now it looks like I have just a little bit of light shining against the side of that, that base, and that's what I wanted. So now I'm going to go in with my light flirty flamingo and I'm going to do this larger flower in this pink. Such a pretty color. Just, you know, take your time. I'm just going to turn some music on and just finish coloring and then we'll meet right back up. done with the markers but I want to show you if you do go outside the line which I did a little bit right here we have what's called the color lifter and if you purchase any of the um, alcohol blends by all means pick up the um, the color lifter because what this allows you to do is go around the outer edge of any place that you may have run off the line and it just lets you clean that up a little bit what it is is just plain alcohol and also if you wanted to lighten an area it allow you to lighten like if you wanted that to be a little lighter you can go over it just like that and that will lighten up that flower as it dries it will it will become lighter so there is our piece and we finished with that so the other thing that i think i want to do that i didn't do on the other card is this little stamp here. I want to just do a little bit of spotting here and there. So I'm going to load that up and I think I'm going to do it in black. I think it's going to look fine in the black. So I'm just going to tap it and just every here and there I'm just going to put some of these little dots um, around just for a little interest around our vase. And I think that will be sufficient. So now we've got that done. We need to decide if we want to pop this up. If we want to pop this up a little bit, oh yeah, I like that. Looking at it in the camera, I think it looks really, really pretty. So let's move our blends out of our way. And I think I am going to pop this up. 
And in order to pop this up, I need to decide if I want to use dimensionals or if I want to use uh, my strips. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab, I save what I call my little bones off of my dimensionals, and I'm going to use some of those. And all I'm going to do is just grab a few of these little strips like this, and they're perfect for putting along the outer edges of your card. So don't throw this part of your dimensionals away. Uh, some people just cut them up and use them as regular dimensionals. I save mine so when I need pieces like this, I have them. And they work beautifully around the outer edges. So I'm going to grab these. Now these are going to need to be cut, so let me grab my snips. And I'm going to need to cut this one about here. I'm just going to butt that right up to it and let it come down there. And this one I'm going to put across the bottom right about here. And you can see how we're using uh, just some pieces that was left over to build up around our card. And it just, they work so well to do this. So hang on to those little pieces. This is just a really good tip to um, assure that you have what you need, you know, and you don't have to so much buy the extra strips or whatever, unless you just want them. And I'm going to take this piece and put it right here. And then we need another piece to go down the side. So let's do this piece. I'm going to run this one from up here. All the way along to there. And then I got this little piece, and this should be able to finish this up. So I'm going to put it to right here. here and then a little piece right about here and that's going to give us everything we need to go across there and like I said that worked out perfect I was able to use some of these little I like to call them my bo the bones that are left over from my Stampin' Dimensionals. So hang on to my bones. And we can go ahead and pull these backers off. And there's going to be quite a few of these little pieces, but that's okay. Just take your time making sure that you're getting all your pieces off. Like that. I think we have them all off now. So now what we want to do is we want to be able to sit this down. And I prefer just to kind of hold it up like this and then kind of bring it together. And once I get it like I want it, then I can just tap it down. And see the little added dimension that that gives you? It really does give you the look of a framed picture. And that's exactly what I was going for in this particular card. So now I'm going to use some um, some glue and I'm going to just put my mat. This is four by five and a quarter standard size mat onto my card base. And I'm going to start up here. 
I'm going to work my way down like that. And then this piece is ready to go right into the middle of that piece. And look at those colors, how they just, everything just really pops. I love that. We do need to work on a sentiment. So I have a piece of scrap paper here. And I want to do, I'm trying to decide, do I want to do you make every day a little brighter? On the other card, I did wishing you um, so much uh, joy on this special day, which makes a beautiful birthday card. Um, we're always needing birthday cards, but we also need encouragement cards. So I think I'm going to look at that sentiment and see how long it is. And I think it will sit right across the card, like maybe here. Let's try it. I'm not sure until after I get this stamped and cut, but we're going to try it. So I'm going to stamp it right there. And I'm thinking I'm going to bring my Misty back in. And I'm going to put this in the top corner right there. Go ahead and pick that up. And for this, I am going to ink it with a, a little darker ink. I'm going to ink it with the Versafine Onyx Black. And this is that pigment ink I told you about. You do not want to use any type of alcohol markers when you're when, oh, sorry about that. When you're using this sort of ink because it is a pigment ink and it will move with alcohol. Now, if you're watercoloring, this is your ink. So um, I'm going to go ahead and ink this up right here. And let's go over. Give it a good press. love it one one turn with that was plenty and it worked so pretty all right so i'm going to take that out lay this back in here and i'll clean that up in just a moment so i'm going to cut i'm going to cut this out so i'm going to go right up underneath it and start cutting around my words just ever so gently, just barely going around to cut out those words. And then when you can get back where you can go straight, try to keep your scissors nice, nice and straight and then curve back out around the, the ones that need to be. And cut that off right there. Now I'm going to start back around that corner, nice and round, moving my paper and not my scissors. So continue around. You want it to look like one fluid motion as you're cutting. the way to the end and then snip right there just like that and I think that's going to be perfect to go on to the bottom of this right across this bottom yeah and I'm going to put that straight down with glue I think that'll look really good it'll just look like it's a little signature kind of on the bottom of that frame I like that 
So let's bring it down to the bottom. Just like that. I love it. I really, really, really love it. So now this is ready to go onto the back of this. So I'm going to take liquid glue. And then we are going to go right to here. And press. Let's come over just a bit. Ah. Anytime you don't get it down quite right, if you can move it before it has a chance to actually adhere, you do have enough of wiggle room that you can make your adjustments. And I think that's good there. So I'm going to rub it on this side, making sure everything is nice and adhered. So now all we need is a piece of cardstock to do our mat on the inside. And let's see, that is three and three fourths. So I think we can do that. Do we want to do a 40 for Monday? Let's see. Why not? I think that'll be really pretty and it'll kind of set everything off on the inside as well as the outside. So I'm going to bring over my paper trimmer and I am going to cut this to five and a quarter by four. And then this one needs to be three and three fourths, which it already is, by five. All the measurements will be listed in the PDF tutorial that is a free download on my blog. So below the video, click the little button that says show more. And once you hit that, um, all you have to do then is uh, go down and find my blog click on my blog and then find this card, which will be the first one, and go down a little ways, about halfway through the page, and you'll see a link that you can click on that says, click here for a free PDF tutorial, and it will open that up and you can save it, download it, or print it, or all three. So um, there we go. I am going to decide what I want on the inside of this. Um, I think just a thank you would be so nice. And I do have this other stamp set here that set, has a sentiment, thank you for everything. And I think I'm just going to grab that one. And I'm just going to stamp that right there in the middle. And I think I'm going to do it in that flirty flamingo just to kind of carry the colors through. So flirty flamingo. that. And we can put some glue on this. And then adhere this to our mat. Like so. And then we can put everything into our card.
I'm going to press. And there is our beautiful card. I love the way this turned out. Of course, this was my my prototype, and then this is the my second go round. And I really think that this one pops more than this one. This one still looks crooked to me, and it drives me crazy. It's like a picture on the wall that's kind of askew. I will go crazy until I straighten it up. So I like. I love the round circle on this one, but I also like it here because it doesn't cover up any of our uh, flower pot, our vase, and I like that. And I like the little elements that I've put around it that's kind of sprinkles. I think it's very cute. So let me know in the comment which card you like better, which one you think looks the best, and uh, which one you would like to make. So thanks so much for tuning in. If you are interested in purchasing any of the products that you saw me use today, there is a link where you can click to shop with me. So it's also under this video. It's also on my blog and in the PDF tutorial. So uh, if you have any questions, please reach out to me by email, phone call, or text. Thank you again so much for being here. God bless and keep you. And as I always say in closing, let everything that you do and say bring glory to our Savior, Jesus. He is worthy. Until next time, bye-bye.